On the Line, Chapter 1. Logging in. Connection successful. Welcome to Endless Empires. Blue light flushes around, swirling at the edges of each wisp as if it is ethereal flame. A soft thump sounds as Khan Cairo logs into the game and lands on a bronze-colored cobblestone pathway. Around him in either direction are fleeting grasslands, dense with gelatinous creatures bouncing about, and various warriors roaming the open lands, engaging in conflict with such beasts. Slime fields? His avatar is tall, only a few notches below the maximum amount allowed on the character generation scale. Otherwise, he is an androgynous looking man. His white hair is long and seven impossible braids down his back. His skin is as close to being gray as is possible while still being considered pale. Closer to beautiful than handsome, he is incredibly toned, currently adorned with some common leathers and a great sword suspended in an implausible sheath on his back. He stares out at the grasslands. I must have been passing out at my desk to log out here. Soft music fills the background. A small band of travelers, mostly players, pass down the road near Khan. They're higher level players, well armored, each with a few notable weapons sheathed away. One plays a banjo, another a steel flute. Green slimes burst as players challenge them and their respawning kin. In roughly 30 seconds after defeat, a slime will reappear a distance from where it was, born anew. Ping me if a blue one spawns! They watch over a portable campfire, a small spit roast, and a few different pots and pans which bubble away. Stoically and sleepily, Khan opens his palm in front of him and a ball of light rises up, bursts, and in the expanding form of this light showcases a series of video game menus, social information, information about Khan as a character. With a few simple flicks, Khan navigates right to the social menu, opens up his guilds tab, and selects the one and only option on the page, Velikaya Gildaya. A list of names appears, which he barely allows time to proliferate on the screen before selecting the bottom option. A system message pops up for him instantly. Ilcat, Prosophiros, is 0.4 kilometers south of Vol. I'm in the slime field, and you're not far outside that little mountain town. <laughs> Khan smiles out at the artificial sky. What is it that you're doing out there? A player approaches Khan and waves towards him. The player is lower level wearing a few pieces of the starting gear from the first series of quests. She is only a few levels lower than Khan despite this. Hi! Hey, what's up? Just looking for some herbs so I can start leveling cooking a bit. Have you seen mint spawn in the area? Khan thinks for a moment. I think there are rare spawn from the bundles under the light green trees. He ponders for a moment longer. At least in this area. I heard there is a winterized mint southeast of Ilking that has a better spawn rate. The player nods. She has picked a rather curvy avatar. The starting outfit for feminine players is a just above knee length skirt with suspenders, a white shirt armored with a plate of steel over one shoulder, and a portion of the chest. The matching gloves and boots look similar to real world construction safety gear if it were tailored by hand with a thick leather stitching needle to finish the edges. Thanks. <laughs> Good luck. Khan turns away, then looks around the area. The streets are mostly clear, other than a few players walking about or traveling with groups. He yawns out loud and stretches. In forgetting to mute himself before making a noise, his avatar attempts to match the movement lips would require to make coffee slurping sounds his voice modulator further modifying the sound to become bubbles and thick mud. Ilcat, Prosophiros, has invited you to join a party. Hey, I see you just locked in. Hey, yeah, just woke up. You sleep? A bit. Woke up not long ago. 
Uh, <laughs> okay. So you good to voice chat? Cause I don't hear anything but your text to voice thing. Parents still asleep. Don't want to wake them. It's Tuesday. Yeah. I just figured they'd be at work or something. It's like coming upon nine your time, right? Don't worry about it. Prepping for the guild meet later. I heard Cosmo has something good for us. I want to bring at least decent quality health pots. Come help me slay a bog troll. Sure. I'm curious what Cosmo has been doing too. Be there soon. Khan closes the menu where the private messages were contained. <sighs> he retrieves a clasped wallet of sorts, about the length of a dagger, and opens it up to reveal a snug storage case for walnut-sized crystals. In the case, there are sockets for ten crystals to rest, while there are only three currently in place. Two are the same shade of dull ice blue, and the other a darker brown. With one of the ice blue crystals in hand, Khan tosses it aggressively at the ground underneath him, and it bursts into a spiral of devouring light. Khan is pulled into the light, dragged to become so thin his entire body is a length of string before becoming nothing at all. The light disperses besides the slime fields and reappears smack dab in the center of the town of Bald. Similar to the towns scattered across the Rocky Mountains, Vald is home to log shacks, a consistent plume of smoke coming from each home, snow in the streets, and piled up at the sides. Large horses pull wagons through either lane in the center of the streets, while players of all sorts travel between the different shops and gathering places. The town isn't massive, spread out over a half kilometer of space leaving room for player housing and stores. The NPCs here are hardy, wearing furs and carrying hatchets or large bearded axes. Join the Square Knights, a groving PvP and PvE guild for new and veteran players. Voice chat is a must. Participate in grinds and have consistent groups for dungeon runs. A player besides Khan shouts. The player is masculine, with short hair, he is wearing the first tier of leather guild armor, which can be customized with the colors of the guild which crafted it. It includes padded shoulders, straps across the chest, a series of bags at one hip, and fitted trousers, a scarf, the seams of the clothing, and a few accent pieces on the armor of the chest reflect the Square Knight's guild colors, red and gray. Hey, I'm good, thanks. The recruiter instantly ignores Khan, much like a salesperson accepting a lost lead. Okay then. Khan moves onward through the town square. Others appear around him, dropping from bursting light into the settlement. Down an alley, a man with a bandage pokes his head out. He has a styled mustache and a long beard, dressed somewhat like a pirate. He holds out a single gold coin and looks down the alley at Khan, winking. Khan looks at the man, glances at the coin, and simply sways his head no, to which the man responds by instantly retreating out of sight down the alley. Khan attempts to target the man before he leaves, but he is out of sight. <sighs> Damn gold sellers. Khan speaks to himself as he passes by a series of two-story homes, decorated with player-acquired items. One of the homes has the head of a giant skeletal beast adorned over the door, while the other is nothing but flowers and pastel replenish. A player passes besides Khan with their dog, a little French bulldog wearing a sparkling pink collar. Chill passes through the area alongside a slight breeze, Steps of many meld into a single, intentional rhythm. The edge of the town signals a chime. Leaving protected area. Outside the town is a snow-covered grass. The air is cold and delicate. Mountains to the east inspire a sort of stillness in the energy of this place. Through the trees, snow piles, and hulking boulders of the surrounding area are moose and sizable direwolves, nearly white with their thick coat of fur. 
players creep through the snow, leaving a trail behind themselves, working towards their prey. Bows prepared, some with flintlock rifles, they hunt cautiously, aiming to take down their target with single, well-placed blows. The road is dry and free of the snow, as if it is warmed just enough. The snow is light, wind subtle. A bit of darkness has started to tease itself in the sky. Ahead of Khan is Ilcat Prosopheros. Her avatar is thin, tall, and colored in purple pastels. Her hair is straight, down to the bottom of her back. A half-plate cuirass squares her shoulders and leads down to scaled folds, underneath which are cured leather trousers. She wears two seven-inch daggers, with one at her hip and another in a reverse grip across her chest. Ilcat works away at a surfaced vein of copper ore, jutting out from the earth below it as if it had suddenly and violently erupted outward. Her pickaxe is a dull iron and low in value, yet she works diligently, breaking off chunks of the ore. Each broken chunk falls to the ground, bounces slightly, then disperses into a pixelated, bright light. Hey! Khan approaches and stands next to Ilcat. He sits down on the ground and crosses his legs. Ilcat waves as she continues to work the oar, nearly entirely broken down now. A private message blips for Khan. Hey. Give me a sec and we'll go over to the bog. Sure. You can hear me, right? You have your headset on? Yeah, you're good. I think folks are waking up. I should be able to go on voice in a bit. No pressure. Khan opens his palm to flick through his character page. His own mining level is at the further reaches of level 10. Out of the possible 1,000, it is a pittance. His highest skill of any on the page is adventuring at 33. The final chunk of ore is broken away. Ilcat waves her pickaxe in the air for a moment and lets it drop. It disperses in the same flurry of digital squares as the harvested ore. She waves again, then nods. All right, you lead. Khan targets Ilcat and a small modal frame appears in his field of view. She is level 20 and has full health. As a party member, he can see she is experiencing a potion-induced bonus to resource drops. He selects follow from a list of many options. They travel down the road for a couple of minutes until a clopping behind them causes them to stop. Player boss, got six spots open. A mid-level player shouts out from atop a caravan pulled by two strong horses. The vehicle is well built, with large wheels doubled up in the back, much like a semi-truck. Khan flags down the caravan and it pulls over to the side, slowing steadily. He points towards it in view of Ilcat and they both get on the player bus. Hey, welcome, folks. We're headed down towards St. Marguez. Just tag me in a ping if you want to get off. Thanks. Khan heads towards the back of the caravan and takes a seat. There are open windows to the caravan, with bench-like seats on either side stretching out its entire length. The back is open, staring out at the road behind. In the caravan with them is another player, a solo player. He is dressed in all black, a hood pulled over his face obscuring what is obviously a masculine but otherwise detailless face. He nods politely to the others, but says nothing. The caravan takes off at a speed triple that of walking the road. Han looks over towards Ilcat. Huh. Shouldn't be long now. She nods in return. You know, the text of voice in this game is pretty good. Why not use that when you don't want to talk? She shrugs. A moment passes. 
It doesn't sound right. A little check mark appears next to her name as she talks, indicating she is using her real voice. I like to inflect. The text to voice doesn't understand italics or anything yet. Ah, fair. Your folks wake up? Yeah, we're all good. I think I passed out around two. A bit early for a Friday, but I was exhausted. You? Khan stares out at the road. Ilcat leans forward slightly, then sits back flat. When I logged out, I think you were inactive for 40 minutes, so... Not much further from that. Cosmo was still on. Looks like he hasn't logged out all night. Neither him nor Dez. <laughs> okay, Dez I get. He's basically a no-lifer already. But Cosmo typically kills it before it gets too late, doesn't he? Mm, yeah. He's been putting in more hours lately, though. Maybe exams are over for him or something? Yeah, something. The solo player gets up, places a few gold coins in the driver's lap, and then jumps off. He says nothing as he does so. Thanks. <laughs> oh, solo players. There isn't a charge for the ride, is there? The driver smiles and sways his head side to side. Not at all. I won't decline the tip, but no requirements at all. I'm going this way anyways, and helping folks along is one of the achievements I need for my caravanner career. Khan nods in understanding. Cool. I haven't even started an occupation yet. I probably should. Caravanner is chill. Each promotion takes a pretty incredible amount of kilometers traveled on the road, so it's best to start early. <laughs> so it's like most things. Darn. Khan turns to peer out at the surrounding area. He targets a bit of grass just off the road and sends a ping to the driver. Out to the bog? Heard there are some interesting items out there. Stories of some rare quests, too. To the bog it is. Ilcat jumps out of the still-moving wagon onto the road, taking a few additional steps to catch herself, but otherwise refusing to falter. Thank you again. He takes leave himself, joining Ilcat. The young lady smiles at Khan teasingly. <laughs> Feeling social? Khan shrugs. I mean, it is an MMO. I don't see your point. It's inherently social. It's a stage to perform on. Maybe for some, but for me, it's the street I'd rather be on. Everywhere else is much more the stage. Pretentious. <laughs> Come on, I have a troll to slay. Khan nods with a smirk, then follows along. The pair head off the cobblestone road connecting the region like an artificial artery and onto dulled green grass. It grows from a dark, dense, and moist mud. Ahead of them, the ground becomes wetter, eventually collecting itself up in puddles of near-black liquid. Further ahead are draping willow trees and a collection of sturdy yew. The leaves of each tree share a gradient of colors between calm green and every possible variation of gray. Ilcat looks out to the trees as they walk. I've always found the bug pretty. Khan nods. Hmm. It has its appeal. He tries his hardest not to look over at her as he makes the statement. Intently, she continues. I'm glad you see it too. Sure, it's a bit like a zombie movie. Yet, the stillness of it all. I know I'm sitting in my room right now and yet... There is a pleasant chill I can feel in this place. She smiles, then becomes silent. I guess it can be quite- Shut up. Hey, sorry, I- Ilcat presses her hand over Khan's mouth to silence him, then points in the distance ahead, just behind a few trees, setting up a pressure trap between them is a bog troll. The creature stands at 20 feet tall, with a width of about half that and muscle tenfold of the fittest human. Its skin appears a light green underneath, but is covered by a pervasive moss which is growing up out of the years of cuts 
infected wounds and debris stuck in the troll's thick flesh. Tucked into a belt at the troll's hip is a splintered tree, tethered together with strands of cord to form an impromptu club. Mm -mm. Mm. Ilkat rolls her eyes, then studies the trap as it is installed. I've never seen them do that before. She moves her hand back and rests it at her side. Khan rolls his shoulders, then glances over at the troll. Makes sense, though, given the author. <laughs> the author. Please. The game is awesome, don't get me wrong. But I still don't really believe their AI core is as advanced as they're trying to say it is. All right. Han gestures towards the troll. But how do you explain the troll creating a trap for players in a place you've never seen it? The game patched while we were asleep. She stands straight up and begins towards the troll. I don't know. Khan follows along. Thick splashes from each footstep make the bog troll aware of the pair approaching. It looks between the players, its trap, and the distance between the two, then lets out a frustrated scream. In an adrenaline-fueled instant, it picks up the whole of the unfinished trap and kicks it forcefully, causing it to fly through the air towards Ilkat and Khan. Shit! Ilkat jumps to her stomach, covering her face in muck. Khan sturdies himself in place, draws his great sword, and attempts to slash through the oncoming debris. His sword cuts through the first few planks of the remaining installation before the rest crashes like a collapsing bulkhead into him. Mud drops all around as Ilkat pushes herself up to her feet. Loud clomping sprints towards her, and quickly afterwards, a shadow grows dark all around where she stands as the troll smashes its impromptu club down towards her. She dodges back, missing the strike by only a few inches. Mud splashes all around at a resounding plunk. In an instant, she draws both her daggers and sinks them into the troll's wrist. He barely reacts and attempts to shake her away, yet she holds on, rising up with the troll's arm to be higher than its head. She pulls her daggers from the troll's wrist and leaps across to the opposite shoulder, unleashing a flurry of stabs into the side of the troll's neck. <laughs> the troll releases its club and with both hands tries to catch Ilkat. She finishes her last strike in a combo, then jumps forwards, clambering over the very hands reaching for her, and landing back down on the ground. Just as Ilkat lands, Khan is picking himself up. A slow, steady upward tick persists as his health restores. You know, I wanted help taking down a bog troll, not an audience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The troll lowers itself and begins to charge the pair. Khan looks over at Ilkat and nods knowingly at her. Time for the <laughs> The suddenly interrupting sound prevents anyone from hearing what Khan says as he lowers his greatsword, allowing Ilkat to step onto it. He launches her with all his might at the oncoming troll. Tough, monstrous hide tears open against the fleeting blades in Ilkat's hands as she launches towards and beyond the troll. She lands a short distance behind as it takes a few descending steps, collapsing at Khan's feet. Both players gain experience. How did you not know about the copyright censors? Khan raises a curious eyebrow. Uh, how didn't I know about what exactly? Yeah, you can't say anything copyrighted in this game, unless you install a license or something on your profile. Just try it. Just try talking about <laughs> Which is funny, because you can say the name Koji Kondo. Huh. Interesting. Without wasting a moment further, Ilkat makes her way over to the corpse of the troll, brandishes a wide-bladed machete, and begins hacking away at chunks of the dark green moths. Never made potions with these ingredients. Will it go far? As far as we can take it. Ilkat confirms this as she finishes a full set of harvesting animations. The once untouched corpse has been rendered into a somewhat cartoonish sack on the ground. 
ill cat has an oversized backpack on her shoulders. A few creeping troll components threaten to leap out of the dense packing. She holds out a second backpack, which appears exactly the same. Khan gestures towards it. For me, I presume? Can't use teleportation crystals with this many alchemical materials. Ugh. Ilcat cites the game's own tutorial. The bog settles into relative silence. There are other players in the distance. Markings which suggest other trolls roam the region. Light in the sky reaches a midday peak while the brief shade offered by cloud cover is enough to cause opaque condensation to reveal each and every breath. Both Ilkat and Khan receive an urgent guild message. Everyone, we gotta talk now. Meet in Ilking Pub by the portal, Luego. Well, I guess we don't have to wonder much longer. <laughs> You say that, but if we get going there now with these on our backs, we might only be late. She studies the gear on her back with a shuffle and sets off towards the city of Ilking, Khan just a step beside her. Your character looks like he's trying to catch flies with his mouth. She leans back in the oaken pub chair. Layers and layers of robes billow with her every movement. Her bright blonde hair drops into curls at any length and sits just above her shoulders the whole way round. She is noble in stature and appearance with a kind inflection. Dez stands perfectly still at the end of the table. His mouth moves oddly. Instead of words, it sounds like he is breathing forcefully. Then something burns away in a steady rhythm. Can't believe they don't have a smoking mode. Kids play this game, Dez. Kids smoke? Dez coughs into his mic. His mouth moves in an attempt to deliver the sound of a balcony door being shut. He coughs again, then <coughs> moves about intently, no longer just standing in place. Dez is tall, relatively thin, with partially dreaded long black hair. He is wearing a hunter's trench coat, somewhat in a state of disrepair, with a mace at his hip in an elaborate sheath. Just sit. Dez sits right across from Sonnenbloom, then smiles sarcastically at her. All around them, a lively tavern churns. Players at rest with their allies, ordering beverages with in-game currency which are, in turn, delivered to them in the real world. The tables here are old, long, and hand-carved. The roof domed, keeping captive much of the light offered by aged iron braziers. Shadows are covered in such a way your drink appears to sway in front of you as fire shifts the light. <laughs> I admit, I see your point. There's a smile sarcastically option, but not a smoking option? She takes a pull from a pint of light ale, the glass chilled even against her touch. An NPC approaches the table, bowing politely. Dressed in a suit and tie with a sharp collar that extends a short distance beyond his shoulders, he reveals in his palm a 20-pack of cigarettes alongside a box of matches. The packaging purports them to be from the brand Everpuff. For you, sir. Compliments of the house. Why? Dez examines the smokes, adds them to his inventory, then stares back at the NPC, looking him straight in the eyes. Thank you. Of course. Please enjoy your stay in our establishment. The waiter whisks themselves away to other duties, quickly getting lost in the crowd. A poof of dull green smoke appears beside Sonnenbloom. That wasn't me. The smoke clears to reveal a broad-figured man dressed in the shrouded clothing of a ronin. A wide-brimmed straw hat partnered with bird feathers and loose lengths of fabric reveal little of the individual underneath. 
A curved blade, just short of 11 feet long, hangs in a sheath on his back. Part of it rests on the tavern floor. His voice is deep, if not muddled with a hard-to-place oddness. I see Cosmo ushered us here before his own arrival. Seems so. What have you been up to, Gekko Matsu? I walked Expansion Island, yet I discovered nothing. With a deep exhale, Dez leans forwards. <sighs> Isn't it actually called Expansion Island, is it? Hey, folks! Khan greets his guild as he enters the tavern, waving towards their table. Gekko Matsu nods politely. Dez waves. Sonenbloom smiles, stands, and sways in place cheerfully. Just behind Khan is Ilkat. She takes steady steps as she heads towards the table, carrying a wooden crate in both her hands. Now if you have cigarettes for me too, I'm gonna be weirded out. Ilkat places the crate down onto the table and spends a full second looking over at Dez as if he is the only idiot in the world. We brought potions! Squeeze fresh out of Bog Troll butt. Han sits next to Dez. They share a familial nod. The waiter pops over from a nearby table. Can I get you anything? Ale! The sound of a few coins dropping can be heard from no discernible source. Nothing for me. Of course. The waiter takes the order and is off just as quickly as they arrived. Ilkat looks over to Khan with a twist. It's mostly moss. She stares at the dull red potions in the crate. Less than 10% troll butt. <laughs> she removes from the crate a total of 12 potions, each about the size of a beer bottle. She sets out two of the potions in front of everyone present, then leaves the other two at the far end of the table. A little something for everyone. One of the windows in the tavern blows in. Glass clinks and shatters against the floor. A fast-moving and shadowed weight smashes through the two lone health potions on the table and breaks most of the way through it. Ilkat just stares down at the lump, now laying across the table. Well, not for everyone. Hey, Cosmo. Dez scratches a match and lights a smoke. Are you harmed? The lump on the table picks itself up. Cosmo isn't terribly tall, standing at about five feet. His ears are long, hair a light red. He is dressed in the outfit of a banker, a sharp vest, collared shirt, and tailored black slacks. He is not especially fit, yet even at a glance he appears cat-like and troublesome. Hey, I'm not in a rush. I really want to know, how's everyone doing? His gaze flickers to the broken tavern window. Everyone stares at him. He taps his fingers against the table. Quiet day then, hey? Up until recently, yes. Well, I need us to run for our lives. Your drink, sir. The waiter arrives, not deterred by the recent architectural modification, and places the ale in front of Khan before taking his leave. Nobody says anything. Then they stare at Khan. For a moment, nothing happens. Hey, sorry I was AFK. Just had to answer my door for the delivery. We good? Dez blows out a thick plume of smoke. <sighs> I'm thinking it's a road beer, my friend. A massive gargoyle lands in the broken-out tavern window. Impossibly animated stone wings crack as they fold out and the creature shrieks from the depth of coal-laden lungs. Its head is half the width of the window overall, and its body can barely pass through, which doesn't deter it from trying. Thinking it's a road beer. Gekumatsu steps up onto the table and in a heroic, singular motion draws the full length of his odachi. It shimmers as if a perpetual blue wave blows through it entirely. 
With the blade posed at the creature, he shouts, Go forth! I shall occupy this beast! Cosmo wags his head. Sorry, Gecko. I need you to come with us. Run! Gecko Matsu looks between the guild and the gargoyle. He sighs, then sheathes the blade, leaping off the table. Let us go, then. The whole of the guild burst out of the front doors of the tavern, out onto the streets of Ilking. Bright white heated pathways line the streets while defending against the ceaseless powdery snowfall. With gas-powered lamps at every corner, raised cobblestone sidewalks, red brick residential housing, and an endless spectacle of ornate decoration, Ilking is an organized festival of lights and colors crawling up the side of a graying mountain which reaches beyond the clouds. With a dull hum from the street lights and steady jazz pouring out from a club down the street, one can barely hear the thwumping of gargoyle wings. Can we teleport? Dez's hands are in his pockets as he jogs alongside everyone. Uh, no, no, just just follow me. C- come on. Sonam Bloom stops as everyone goes on and holds her palm out flat. A disc of swirling colors appears in front of her, which pushes forwards with great fervor. The light expands and grows into a net, which reaches out at the gargoyle as it dives down towards them. She doesn't wait to see what happens before turning back around and breaking into a sprint. Brickwork is dislodged in a loud smash behind the guild. Khan looks backwards for a moment to see another player's wagon has been flipped and a portion of a storefront destroyed, neither stopping the pursuit of the gargoyle. Other players attempt to target the creature, but seem unable to do so. Khan glares at Cosmo. What even is this thing? How is something still aggroed onto you in a city? Well, that's the funny part. As far as I can tell, it's defending the city. (laughs) Hmm. This does explain why you're dressed like a banker. Uh, Don't tell me that you... Ilcat is interrupted as the gargoyle dives down towards the guild. With a sudden shift, Cosmo turns down an alley and kicks in a locked wooden door. Beyond the passage is a tight staircase leading into absolute darkness. Without a question asked, everyone leaps down the staircase. The gargoyle, hot on their trail, bashes its shoulders into the tight passage, screeches like steel being sheared, then leaves. Can someone make some light? I can't see anything. Dez scratches a match, holding it a few inches from his face. The flickering little flame barely illuminates what seems to be an ossuary, abandoned for ages. Layers and layers of tightly packed bones and skulls form the walls and columns of this diminutive urban cave. Is this a dungeon? I've never seen this quest before. Cosmo steps forward, then turns to face everyone. No, no one has. That's... (laughs) That's what got me so excited about this! He produces from his inventory a scroll, protected in the most extravagant of seals cast in gold and jade. What did you do, Cosmo? Cosmo smiles. I took something from the treasury of Ilking. Gekko Matsu shakes his head. How? Have you even unlocked the infiltration skill? Did you find a glitch? Nah, nothing, nothing like that. (sighs) This quest I found, or it found me, I don't know. I think the game made it for me. Nobody had ever heard of it. The NPC I got it from is new to the game, and there's no mention of him on the forums. Osmo opens the scroll. I was told that if I listened to everything they said, that I'd be able to get in and out with a treasure beyond value. Dez leans in holding the lit match away from the scroll. He studies it, then laughs. <laughs> it looks like a contract. Zonum Bloom raises a single eyebrow. A contract? 
Sonam Bloom steps next to Dez, then examines the scroll. She hums slightly as she parses the contents of the page. It's not just a contract, it's a deed. It says whomever is in possession of this document is the rightful owner of the town of Verplek. Verplek. Dez lights another smoke with the dwindling match. Never heard of it. Sonam Bloom shakes her head. I doubt anyone has. Apparently it was abandoned years ago, before anyone was even playing the game. A notification blips. Everyone in the guild receives it. New quest added. The Hollowed Homes. <laughs> uh, that bodes well. End of chapter one.